Hey there, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. So here on the show, I talk a lot about weekly planning. Um, nine times out of 10, conversations always come back to the importance of weekly planning. Well, I realize I've been doing you guys a little bit of a disservice because I don't feel that I have shared the importance of monthly planning and the role that it plays. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about a little bit today. And I'm actually gonna, going to be tying it into the conversation of deciding whether you want to be a paper planner user or go fully digital. Now I have shared, you know, I, uh, there's a lot of right ways to do it, right? I am not a believer that the only success is if you're on paper or the only success is if you're digital. Um, I also have a lot of very passionate <laughs> thoughts and opinions on selecting the right type of paper planner um, because it really does matter, especially when we're talking about weekly planning. But when we talk about monthly planning, I've gotten some feedback from folks where they're like, well, why does it matter if I'm paper or digital? Monthly layouts are pretty much the same in just about any and every paper planner, right? Usually you open it up, it's a two page spread and it's the month, you know, broken up into little squares. So I will say, and, and I have an entire YouTube series where I'm doing a deep dive on a variety of different planners, um, paper planners and digital. And with all of those pretty much like the monthly layouts, I'm like, yeah, they're all, you know, pretty, pretty common. So why would it matter when we're thinking about the type of planner that we want to use when we think about monthly planning. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about as well. So first, um, I think it's important to talk about what is the difference between weekly planning and monthly planning. So there's kind of three key things that are very uniquely different between the two. So the first is when we think about monthly planning, um, the type of uh, or the, the specificity of the planning that we're doing in monthly planning isn't nearly as granular as what we do with our weekly planning, right? Because, you know, at the beginning of the month, there's no way that you can really plan with certainty that maybe 22 days from now at 9 a.m. you want to reserve a chunk of time to work on a project, right? We don't know, and especially if you have a lot of uncertainty in your life, the further out you plan, the harder it is to get specific. This is why whenever I'm coaching and teaching people on project planning for long-term projects, um, it's very foreign to them at first when I'm like, no, 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 we're not going to get super specific for work that you're going to be doing several weeks from now because we don't have enough information to be able to do that, right? So when we're doing our monthly planning, it is far less specific. So instead of picking dates and times to be doing things, we are kind of earmarking weeks that we believe based on the current level of information we have that this is going to be a great week to tackle certain projects or tasks. Now, another difference between monthly planning and weekly planning um, is the type of of information, right? So I've already talked about the specificity, but the type of information is very different as well. So with our weekly planning, we're getting really specific on um, actual tasks, how much time we're spending doing them, etc. With monthly planning, we kind of bring that up to a higher level where we might just be saying, this is a week, I, again, or a couple of weeks where I feel like it's going to be a good time for me to make progress on a specific project, but we're not going to be laying out the exact tasks that you're going to be doing at that time, right? Now, the third difference is how far out in advance we do it. So with our weekly planning, you can actually uh, do your weekly planning the day before the next week. And I actually have some students that do their weekly planning the day of the start of the new week. They actually carve out time at the beginning of a week to sit down and do their weekly planning as they launch into the week. With monthly planning, though, this is an activity that I'm always encouraging people to be doing a good four, um, four to five days before the start of the month. And for me, it kind of depends on where the weekend falls on when I'm going to be doing my monthly planning. Um, at the time that I am recording this, the start of the next month is a Thursday. I 
I actually just did my weekly planning the weekend before. So I, in this situation, I actually did it five days before um, because again, the type of information, the level of planning that we're doing is something that we really want to be doing, um, not waiting until the day before the new month starts. Now, if you want to see, you know, this podcast is not, the purpose of this episode is not to take a deep dive in how to do monthly planning, but if you want to see an example of what monthly planning can look like, I actually have a very kind of detailed training on that inside of my app. Um, so I do have an app in both the App Store and Google Play called The Pink Bee. You'll just want to search for it, all one word, The Pink Bee. You can go ahead and download it. It does have a $1.99 um, fee. It's a one time. It is not a monthly recurring subscription or anything. And I've got a ton of training in there. And one of that, the trainings in that app is actually on monthly planning. So that's a little side note. If you want to see it in action, go check it out there. Now let's bring this conversation of monthly planning now back to planners and something to think about when we are debating whether we want to be paper or digital. Now, if you are used to using an online calendar system, iCal, Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, right? Any of the kind of mainstream calendaring tools out there, you are probably used to the fact that anytime you set an appointment, um, you know, something, a, a task at a set date and set time on your calendar. So maybe next week you have a 30 minute appointment on Tuesday at 1030 uh, for a meeting that you need to go to from 1030 to 11. Well, when you go to the monthly view on your digital calendar, that's going to be there. Every single thing that you put on your specific days in your um, calendar software is going to roll up and show on your monthly view. Now, what this means is if you are someone that has a lot of appointments, um, I know, you know, especially back when I was in a corporate setting, there would be days where I might have eight or nine different appointments on my calendar for that day from meetings to, um, you know, block time to actually get work done, so on and so forth. Well, when all of that rolls up to your monthly view, what it means is it is so noisy and so crowded that oftentimes you can't even see what the information is. What it starts to do is just put little dots, right? So if you had seven things on your calendar for the day, what you might end up seeing is three dots um, with part of the information and then underneath it, it would just say seven more or eight more or however many things you have on your calendar. It is really, really difficult to see at a month view the information that is important to you. Now, with a paper planner, because information isn't stored digitally and it can't you know, like automatically replicate itself, right? You are in the driver's seat of deciding what information you write on your monthly page versus your weekly planning pages. So if I have a recurring appointment, like a meeting on Tuesday, every single Tuesday at 1030 in the morning, I may not need to capture that on my monthly planner page. I'm used to it. It's at a time, you know, I'm just making this up. It's at a time where maybe I know I'm at work during the day. I don't need that on my monthly calendar, but I would choose to capture it when I'm doing my weekly planning. Now, so this kind of lends itself to, well, then what do we want? On that monthly planner? Well, let's first talk about the purpose of our monthly planning. The purpose of our monthly planning is twofold. It's all about helping us be, be realistic and set boundaries. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we learn how to do monthly planning the right way, and again, I've got that covered in the app for you, what we start to see is we gain a lot of reality on, okay, what can I really take on this month, 
right? So when we do monthly planning and we're seeing at a big picture what all of our current commitments are, what all of our obligations are, how many days you've already kind of got blocked maybe for travel or work or projects or things like that, it allows us to get really realistic at the start of the month to make good choices on setting expectations for what we're really going to accomplish in the upcoming month. Now, on the boundary side, what that also helps is there have been times after I've done my monthly planning session where the realities of my month has hit and I know stepping into that new month that I need to be very careful about not jumping in and saying yes to things without taking some very thoughtful time. So when we see we've got a jam-packed month coming up, that can help us say, you know what, I need to step into this month knowing I need to set a lot of clear boundaries around my time and not allowing more commitments and obligations to sneak in there. All right. So this is really why we want to do our monthly planning. So back to you know what goes in that monthly plan when like on my paper planner, this is where I'm capturing things like travel, right? So if I'm actually about to leave on a trip, so what days are blocked off on my calendar because I'm on a trip? Are there any big events that are capturing a significant portion of my day that I need to remember? Is there something due, right? Maybe you're working on a big project and it has a due date on a Friday and you want to write down you know, very clearly for you to see this is an important day because this project is due. The times I am going and looking at my monthly view is anytime a new opportunity comes in where someone is asking for a good chunk of my time, I will instantly go to the monthly view right away and see, do I, what do I have around that date? Am I already in the middle of something else pretty big, right? So circling back to our conversation around digital or paper planners, then this is one of the main reasons why I have not gone fully digital. Um, when you are using, say, Google Calendar, everything rolls up to that monthly view. And it's really hard for you to see just the key information. Now, yes, there are workarounds for this, because I know some of you are tech savvy enough to know that. And I've played around with it. So what would a workaround be? Well, you can actually create a new calendar under your same you know, Google or iCal account, and it could just be your monthly calendar. So you could choose to go in and put the types of information that you want to see at a monthly view on that specific calendar. And then when you're looking at your Google calendar, you can check and uncheck different calendars that you want to see. So I know that there are, and actually I've got some students of mine that are using this approach because digital is really where they need to be. So yes, you can do this type of monthly planning on a digital calendar, but it just is going to take a little bit more time um, from a technology standpoint to make that happen. So could I do that? I could. But I am still, because of the stage of life I am in, in terms of the amount of time I'm spending in front of a computer, um, I, I still choose to do a paper planner. Now, I have recommended in the past, and I still do, Artful Agenda as another great digital calendar solution. But I will say from a monthly planning perspective, that's the one area where it really falls short because you can't toggle on and off calendar views very quickly and easily like you can in a Google Calendar. So if you have never thought about monthly planning, again, go check out the app, go see what monthly planning is all about. And that might help, you know, help you decide if you're struggling paper or digital, paper or digital. It may be because you've recognized that that monthly planning aspect is maybe really challenging to achieve if you're going fully electronic or digital. All right, guys, I hope you have a great, great rest of your week and I will see you, or I guess you will hear me back here next week.